in addition to signing the deal. Um, talk us through just the, the, what happened. We learned about this yesterday and how significant it is that they're going to be stationing these weapons there in Belarus. Quite, sounds quite alarming whenever we're talking about nuclear weapons, the rhetoric. In addition to signing the deal and, of course, those extra aircraft, um, they're also positioning Iskander uh, missiles, which are capable of carrying the warheads. And, of course, they've also got to find... Russia's got to find storage facilities in Belarus. They're going to build those. They'll be ready by July. Um, but it's worth re remembering that these weapons will still be under Russian control, even though they're forward deployed. Um, I'm old enough and ugly enough. The former Soviet Union, when it was around, when it collapsed... A lot of the weapons, the uh, nuclear weapons, were forward deployed. And by 1996, weapons that had been deployed in Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine were all back on Russian soil again. So, actually, this move of forward deploying it to Belarus is just reversing that trend. It's also worth noting the Americans say they're monitoring the situation, but they say there's no evidence whatsoever that Russia is planning to use nuclear weapons. Interesting sort of relaxed response. I'm sure the, the, the polls uh, will, will be wondering a, a little bit more nervously about things like that. Talk us through, though, some of the other thought processes. What else is happening behind the scenes to lead to this decision by the Russians? Well, Russia has a huge nuclear arsenal. It's got nearly 6,000 nuclear weapons. Uh, they can blow the world up um, several times over. They can be launched from air, land or sea, from the bombers there, from submarines or from, uh, from land base. And, of course, over the years, it's become less worried about range. They use intercontinental ballistic missiles, so they're going to be based anywhere. So the fact that they're forward deploying these is actually irrelevant from a, actually a military perspective. So this is almost certainly about messaging. It's worth remembering Russia is not doing well in the war in Ukraine. There's a bit of sabre-rattling. But if we look back to this month's uh, visit by Xi Jinping, um, he made very, very clear to Putin at the time, you know, this is uh, it's not about... He should not deploy or use nuclear weapons in this conv uh, conflict. So I think, actually, the bigger worry here is almost certainly for Belarus... Um, bizarrely, because um, Ru Russia's made really clear, Putin certainly, he wants to reassimilate um, Belarus back into his the former Russian Empire. Uh, they've been deploying troops forward, they've been mounting operations out of Belarus, they've now got aircraft out of Belarus, and they're now looking at mounting tactical nuclear weapons there. So it's a, a, a real worrying sign, I think, for Belarus. Uh, also, is there an aspect that Vladimir Putin's making this announcement for his domestic audience? Almost certainly. I mean, yesterday, this uh, interview, OK, it was on a state-owned TV channel, so it was all carefully managed. Very confident Putin talking about the West will never be able to sustain its level of support. And also, we're going to have 1,600 brand-new main battle tanks on the, uh, in Russian hands by the end of the year. But if you look at the facts behind that, US economy is 10 times the size of Russia. The collective UK, France, Germany is five times the size uh, of Russian. And therefore, it's easily got the capacity. And in terms of how they're going to build the tanks, tanks. Um, Russia's only factory building tanks can build 20 a month. They're losing 150 a month. It's very difficult to see how they'll do the maths. And even Russian commentators are turning around and saying they're going to have to open the cupboards, bring more out of storage, and even potentially bring the T-34 out of storage. That's when well, 1940s that was first brought into service. Has no place on the battlefield whatsoever. Shahid-136 drones, 71 used from Iran. Big pauses because Russia's running out. And I think despite the rhetoric that Putin's coming out with, Russian industry is struggling and Russia is increasingly reliant on its uh, importing uh, w weapons from its uh, few friends. Just quickly, going back to this timing of this decision to, to say they're going to station these weapons in, in Belarus, any surprise that it came after he met with President Xi? Something that President Xi would have said, yes, OK, you can have my... A tacit approval to do something like that? I think it's much simpler than that, to be brutally honest. I think um, we've seen on the battlefield that Putin's going from offence to defence. He would have hoped to have got further, particularly around Bakhmut. And I think now he's really worried about what Ukraine is going to do on their counter-attack. And therefore, he's trying to sabre-rattle to try and scare the Western community. Because without Western aid, Ukraine's um, counter-offensive would be very difficult to mount. Really interesting. Sean, as always, thanks so much.